The uh, first item on the agenda is comments from the public. We and have Chris is on our Yes, list. Mr. Donna. I'll just try to keep your comments to five minutes, as you want. Sure, thank you. Thank you. So, um, my name is Chris Vada. Uh, I'm a parent and a district resident. Uh, I've lived here for, uh, geez, about 18 years at this point. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, thank you, you know, for your service. I know that this is a thankless job. You know, I, I know firsthand because I was a board member. I'm an administrator, so I really uh, can appreciate everything that you do. So, I don't want you to think that this is a session where I'm going to complain. Um, I do have to apologize to Dr. Nick. This was kind of a last minute type thing. I told you I'd give you a little bit of a heads up, but you're a little bit aware of, I think, what, what we're going to talk about, um, about the class rank. Oh, yeah. 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 And so I'm um, just saying, so, you know, so I'm here to talk really about the class rank for uh, PTEC students. So I'm here as an advocate for PTEC students, as well as my son, Angelo, who's also a PTEC student. Right. So um, some of you may not be aware of this, but PTEC students are not <laughs> eligible according to um, you know, Mr. Bettino and, and Dr. Dr. Nick for a class rank, right? So uh, the intent of the class policy is 72-23 was to reward, you know, students who are taking academically challenging classes, right? So that's one intent. The other intent really was to prevent students from moving here their senior year and being eligible to be in, in the top 10, right? Um, that really is it in a nutshell, right? So the class rank is to really reward the hardworking students who are taking academically rigorous courses and to prevent somebody from really cherry picking. Like I'm gonna move to, I'm gonna move to Canada Johari and be in the top 10 and get an academic scholarship. All right, the intent was not to prevent lifelong district resident students who have attended Canada Johari elementary, middle, and high school from receiving a class rank. And you might ask, why do I seem so passionate? How do I know this? Because I was on the Board of Education. I was on the Policy Committee. And I helped write this. Right? So when somebody tells me that I, I in, am interpreting it the wrong way, or I'm not quite sure looking at it the, the right way, it's like telling an author that their words are wrong. It's like telling somebody who wrote a song that their lyrics are not acceptable, or they don't know what the lyrics' true meaning is. So I know because that was part of what I did, all right? So I do wanna, and, and this really is kind of somewhat of a new revelation to me, right? So, I, I, you know, I'm gonna appeal to the board because, you know, how would you like it if, if your kids, you know, Max and Kelly or Drew, you know, or Olivia, Sam and Ben, uh, Caitlin, or, you know, one of your, your, one of your boys, you know, say um, Nate, I think he was the youngest one. They took college courses or they took AP courses, and then you suddenly found out, well, guess what? They're no longer gonna be eligible for class ranking. I think you would probably not be happy yeah. with that. Yeah. And they both were not. Okay, but if, if they were um, eligible, or you thought they were eligible, and you found out that they were no longer gonna be in the class rank, I, I would imagine you probably would not like that. You probably would be like, that makes no sense to me, right? So um, that's what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm here to kind of advocate for the PTEC students, right? Because when my son and other PTEC students signed up to go to PTEC, they are Canada Johari students. They should have all the perks. They should have all the invitations. They should go to all the dances. They should have uh, the ability to play sports. By, by all means, they are Canada Johari students. I know this because I've worked at three separate BOCES. I haven't worked at HFM BOCES. I currently work at Questar 3 BOCES. Actually, four BOCES. Questar 3 BOCES, CAP Region BOCES. I work at Herkimer BOCES, and I work at ONC BOCES. And every time as an administrator there, 100%, we would always tell the parents and the students, this is an extension of your home district. You are your home district. You know, you are a district student, district resident of, the, of your home school. You should have all the perks. So the fact that I'm hearing that, you know, I was I was part, you know, I, I co-wrote and input on this um, policy, and to find out that I'm hearing otherwise is, is somewhat, you know, alarming and disturbing. Um, the other thing is I wanted my son here to advocate for himself, but he's taking a college course. He takes a class from six to nine every Tuesday. He took three classes college courses in the summer. He took a course over the winter. 
I would say he's the epitome of trying to take academically challenging courses through FMCC. I don't know if there's a lot of Kanjo, Kanjo students or other Kanjo students who took three college courses over the summer or who are taking night courses or who choose to take a course over winter. The other thing, the other argument is, is that some, some people may say, well, we're paying for an associate's degree, right? They, they shouldn't really have to have a class ranking. Those are two different, two different items. Class ranking is for those kids who go to Canada Harry and attend Canada Harry and, you know, uh, take the academically challenging courses, and this is per the policy, consistently work to their personal best, and take the maximum available courses during their four years of high school. Which one, one, thank you for keeping me on track. I'm, I'm, I'm getting done. <laughs> All right, so what I'm saying is if you look at that policy, P-TECH students fit that bill, there's no wiggle room for language. Or for, well, I think it means this, or I think it means that. I know because I helped write that, right? I helped to prove it. And at no time was it designed to prevent Canada Harry students from receiving a class rank, right? So the argument is, is that, um, you know, no one else ranks these kids. Well, if everybody else is wrong, doesn't mean Canada Harry has to be wrong, right? We're leaders. If there's something's not right, fix it. Endeavor to fix it and do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. We already pay for these kids' college. They shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't have a class rank. Again, those are two different items that, that should not even be in the same argument. And again, um, you know, the interpretation is that the rank applies to PTEC students. It applies to students who are at, you know, who are Kenjiri students. Okay. That's it. Okay, well, well let me just say that, as you know, we, we don't have discussions during the... No, I, I, I get it, Mark. But I, I would like to suggest that um, Nick reach out to you and we set up a meeting with me, you, and Nick to discuss it further and see uh, where we can go from there. All right, and just so you know, I have already spoken to both, you know, Nate and Dr. Nick. So I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate and your I would, I be part of that discussion as well. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, enjoy your evening. Again, I appreciate <laughs> you. your service. Thanks, Chris. You guys all have a nice Thank evening. Chris. Thank you. Bye now. All right, Chris. Are we going to get an opportunity to discuss that as a board? And well, so I think we should have that meeting first, and then we'll, we'll bring it to the discussion as well thereafter. Will we get a little further information about it, do you think, or? What? I know I spent a lot of time talking about class rank over the past couple of years. Yeah. yeah. So, I think I'm I have something to I'm just wondering why we're, why, why does it have to be hush-hush, and why wouldn't all five board members be a part of that conversation? Um, that's the process we usually go through and we report back to the five board members, to the conversation. It's not like a final thing when we have a meeting with Mr. Fat. In, in, well, let me just say, in general, what the procedure is, is that it should go through channels. Um, and I would like to be aware of the thinking of, of Nick and, and Nick and Nick um, about this and get further details about it. And if, I, I think at that point, it will come to the board and we can, if, if it's not resolved in that meeting, to, you know, to Chris's satisfaction, then I think it would be proper for it to come to the board for us to discuss it and see if we agree with that that resolution or not. I mean, that's generally the way that it works. If it comes to the board, that type of issue comes to the board only after it's gone through channels and if it's not resolved to the satisfaction of, of the person that is raising the issue, well, what if they have the opportunity to then come to the board. I thought he yeah. already did go to those two, and so now he was going to the board. It's up to you about that. Well, what if we have questions? I just have I have a couple of questions about what he raised and what it made me think about. So, All right, so why don't we do this? Uh, let's put that on the new business. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's good. That'd be we'll great. Discuss it there. Yep. Is that okay? Yep. yep. All right. Um, okay, so the next point on the agenda are reports. Uh, the student representative is not here. Um, I think of thinking that we might have been confused because. You know, the third usually the meeting is Thursday and the school is closed Thursday. I emailed him. If he gets back to me, I'll jump in and let everyone know. Okay, thank you. Okay, next thing is the transportation committee. It doesn't matter. I mean, we, we just had a, a conversation with Wayne and he's looking um, to ask us to sign the letter of intent for. Uh, the purchase 
or the leasing of buses um, because we have to get it in early, even though it's not until the next school year, but the letter of intent needs to go in early because of Possible supply and demand issues. So um, that's what we met about. And the expense, it's about up, it's up 14000 from last year due to costs going up for everything, but um, that is not a part of the letter of intent. Um, the letter of intent is just to let the company know that we would like to um, uh, work on this agreement. Is that 14000 per bus? No, no total. total. Okay. And one's a wheelchair bus, that's why it's a little bit more. All right, uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. no? um, and he did just to echo to he said the buses that we bought last year is the same company. He's very pleased with the result and the customer service. So something happened this year, we came, fixed it and without any question, and they've been running very good. So. Okay, then we'll move on to discussion of COVID 19 and the capital cost update. Yep. So, just an uh, update for. Um, Testing, uh, quarantines, ARPA grant, is some of the stuff that I wanted to kind of just talk about a little bit. Um, we have now our testing procedures in place for the uh, people who have to test. That's been going on for now three weeks, and everything's been very good coming back. Uh, everyone's following the protocols. Um, our nurse coordinator is doing a great job with this, and we have four different times during the day where people can get the test done. Um, and if they can't make it, they let her know, and we'll come on follow up on a Monday uh, to, to do the test as well. Um, we are also testing asymptomatic, excuse me, symptomatic faculty and staff. Uh, they fill out a form in the morning. If they have symptoms, if they want to get tested, we can test them here. And we are putting together a letter to send out to parents. Now that we have the testing in place and we have a good hold of it, we have the opportunity to test symptomatic students as well if we get parental permission to do so. Um, in addition to that, the HFM BOCES grant that we're going through for the testing um, was able to secure um, PCR machines, and they should be here in the next few weeks, for each one of the schools. So what the PCR machine allows us to do is after the fifth day of quarantine, only for the students who are on quarantine, not the positive case, we have the opportunity to test students out and get them back into school. And in many cases, we usually find out day three, four, and five uh, by the time you find out the case. So um, there could be a good opportunity to, to return kids rather quickly. Obviously, again, with parent permission. We just wouldn't do that. We'd get parental consent. Um, right now, if they want to test out, they have to go to Herkimer or Schenectady or Gloversville to find a test. And in some cases, it's turned around in a few hours. In some cases, it's turned around in a few days. So this would be a, 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 for us to have an opportunity to do that. So for right now, we are testing um, uh, faculty and staff that need to be tested, that want to be tested, students that want to be tested, symptomatic uh, faculty and staff. Staff, we're moving along with symptomatic students and possibly, to, well, we will have the PCR uh, capabilities as well to test the students out after five days. So it's a pretty robust, you know, testing system that we're, we're, we're going to have in place. But the bottom line is it's about cutting down the quarantine, getting our students back to school, and um, hopefully stopping the cases before they come in here. So that, that's kind of the whole process of it. Um, a shame in some cases that we are in charge of all that. But I think we've taken the initiative to make sure that we can um, turn over every stone possible to make sure our kids get back to school and people are safe. So the ARPA grant was approved. We're starting to move forward with purchasing um, uh, supplies, equipment, um, the things that we had in that list that we created last summer. Um, and we're putting our purchase orders and everything in now to start that process. Uh, the furniture, things of that nature are, are going full force ahead. So very excited to see that. Um, the state also had a supply. That, that would be for the reconfiguration of the cafeteria. Correct. The Plus the supplies and equipment that the teachers wanted as well. They put in a list of things that they wanted. Um, so that'll be going out as well. Um, 
the state also separated the ARPA grant and is now making us apply that portion as well. So that was a new twist. And that application was actually longer and worse than the, the regular ARPA application. So we're, we're, we finished that as well, and that's on the docket. We're waiting for that approval. Um, just um, other things just to point out necessarily COVID. I just want to have a shout out to Olivia Schaefer for making the states mm, yeah. in cross country. She goes this Friday. We wish her the best of luck and we'll give her a good send off. Um, a heads up too, if you remember last year, the social studies department got chosen to, to uh, speak at the social studies conference at the end, uh, end of November. And Dr. Greg Patanza got uh, asked again to, to speak at the space exploration conference in, in February, which is very, you know, very exciting for our district overall, which is great. Um, and one more thing, the, the local school districts and HFM BOCES, it's not final yet, but I just want to give you a heads up. They were looking at possibly setting um, a new price for retired substitutes, fully certified retired substitutes, to garner more retirees who have experience teaching to come back and, and substitute. Um, so we're in the beginning stages of that, but we feel if uh, an increased price to get that much experience, and it was around you know, the whole area, Obviously, we'll want to kind of keep up with that or we'll lose, you know, substitutes. So just give you a, more of a heads up on uh, that that's moving in, in probably a quick direction in the next couple of weeks or a month. But I'll let you know as we find out. Uh, we quarantines right now, uh, if you remember when we started, it was at 83. We're down to 11 uh, with six possibly testing out uh, within the next couple of days. So... Um, Good in some ways, and, and still uh, with the testing, I think will allow us to to keep that number down um, as we move forward. So, and obviously we know the five to one uh, vaccine is rolled out for any parents or students who wish to get vaccinated. Are we struggling to get subs? Like, do you find that we we are don't have enough subs that we have people having to fill in? We're we're covering classes, yeah, definitely, yeah, and, and we've been lucky. I think we've had a pretty good contingent of consistent subs. Um, but as we start to branch out to having people go to conferences again and field trips, mm -hmm. uh, that started to add up a little bit, but we're trying to keep that train moving too to get our kids back to some more normalcy with that. So anything you can do to get some more uh, some experienced substitutes here would be great. So all set. I just have a question on the testing at this point. Yep. Prior to the arrival of the PCR machine, what is the process for you know when for testing? How fast are we getting carried around by? In terms of people going to get a PCR test on day five? No, no, no. I mean our you tests. said we're doing testing, correct? Oh yes, our so testing. What is that process? That process they're sent in on Friday at four o'clock, and we have pretty much got them back around five to six o'clock on Saturday. The results. Uh, last week, uh, they got sent to the same location, but the driver said it was closed, and they got pushed off until later. They went back, supposedly. They said it was still closed, which they're open 24 hours. So something happened there. UPS didn't deliver on Sunday, so they had to do the test on Monday. So, um, and the week before that, HFM BOCES, their test went to Oklahoma. So it was quite interesting. So I think we've solved the issue moving forward if there is one. And we were one of four districts that happened to us. So that's usually the turnaround. Okay, any other questions on the COVID report? And the reason, just quick, why we did it on the Friday is so we would get the results by Saturday, so we'd have a plan of attack in case um, four bus drivers tested positive or three food service people. We can well, we can talk over the weekend and hopefully put a plan together to keep the school open. Okay. Anything else on COVID? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm allowed to speak. Go ahead. Um, since the FDA has now approved the Pfizer for EUA for children 5 to 11, what is the school's plan on vaccination? Is there any sort of plan? I know in the city they are um, vaccinating at sites at the schools. Uh, that would be totally up to the parents. Yeah, and uh, we would possibly hold a site like we did the other two vaccine sites, and that would be nothing's... We don't make it mandatory. It's only if the state makes it mandatory. Yep. Okay. 
Right, then uh, continue with the capital update. Capital update. Um, we, yep. Uh, we've got the <laughs> newsletter ready to go out for next week. We have a video and an update on our website. Um, and that video went out to faculty and staff, and we'll also go out to parents tomorrow. Um, just a quick video of what the project's all about, which we pretty much know. And uh, a highlight of everything and the link to the website, which shows you a list of all the items for the uh, for the project. So we'll follow up with a video, email, uh, a link to the website, to a newsletter next week, to um, a rollout if anybody wants to come up on the 23rd uh, to answer any questions. Eric will be here, I'll be here uh, if anybody has any questions on the building project in general. So we just wanted to show you the website and the link is in there as well if you want to click that on. It's in here. What's that? I said they have a port from my Mac. And the sound is not functioning on my Dell. On your Dell? Yeah. Well, you can go to the website <laughs> in your. Mm -hmm. There should be a link down below. earlier today, but it is now. Is that mm -hmm. Yes, there's a video. Yep. Okay. So if you do the link, you will actually see the website. And under the website, you'll see a list of voter information at a glance, um, all the information, and I don't know why the video's not I didn't see the video. I saw that. That was there already, but I didn't see the video. The video's there. Yep. So I don't know why the video's not on there. Yeah, you can find it on the whole page. I attached the video to the uh, agenda. Okay. So as of uh, today, when I looked at it, the video was up there. So, and as of yesterday, too. So I will follow up with that. There. It's a video, and it's just a quick video with me voiceover, and they're just talking about the project. But mostly, all the important information is right here. It's about a minute, seventeen seconds video. Okay, all righty, and we should be good to go. We've approved everything. We're getting the poster boards. Um, all the information should be out well in advance. And um, obviously, anybody who has any questions, they can reach out to us. And the vote is on the ninth, the seventh, seventh. Any, any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving we'll on. DEI update. You want to give a little update? Um, okay, sure. Um, okay, so a week ago, two, today, a week ago today, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a faculty uh, conference day, and um, I forget his name now. Uh, Dr. Bradwell. Dr. Bradwell came, who was going to be our consultant on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and gave a presentation to the staff, the, the assembled staff, about that. Uh, about about that, and um, I was really impressed with it because what was really amazing is he raised a lot of thought-provoking questions, but not in a, a provoking way. You know, so I think it really generated a lot of thought on people and I spoke to some people afterward who you know shared that feeling about it. There was also when there was a comment and question session following his presentation, there were a number of comments and questions um, which indicated that people were really engaged with it. And um, I thought it was a very positive and uh, you know beginning and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to his continued um, help with us in, in moving forward on, the, on these issues. So um, I just, I was very happy I was able to be there and to listen to it, and, uh, and I, I thought it was just a very good beginning. And we've, um, uh, HFM BOCES is going to, just got word today that they're going to offer uh, an event either next Monday or Tuesday. I'll let you know as soon as I know. I just the email came out today and which day they were going to pick or they let us know by tomorrow, excuse me, um, that they were going to have Dr. Bradwell at HFM BOCES either next Monday or Tuesday night at their monthly meeting to just uh, explain how to run out HFM BOCES and the rest of the districts as well. So I'll give this an all in way if anybody could have. And then uh, the other thing is that the, the entire staff was given a questionnaire at, before the meeting. Um, it's been filled out. It has not yet been you know, tabulated and uh, and you know, condensed or not condensed. Some very good results. I'll put it that way. I started to put some things uh, together. We have an admin meeting tomorrow, so we're going to look at uh, a couple different parts. But I broke down the percentages and the questions, 
and we're going to focus on two of our highlighted areas that have the biggest need for the survey. And we'll focus on that with the staff moving forward. My right, one thing I would request is that uh, the board all board members all receive a copy yep. of the uh, survey results so that we can kind of mm -hmm. appreciate that as well. Yep. Yep. Um, any questions or comments on this? So what is, so you're gonna analyze those results you said and then you're gonna take the top two? Yeah, we'll look at the areas that uh, gave us how would I say um, there's it, things that they answer like very you know uh, slightly or concerned yeah. or, and we'll look at those two look at one or two of the areas that were um, of the most concern to correct. the staff. Yes. Okay. So that so that and then how are you gonna do that? In terms of how are you so so you have um section a and section b which are the most of concern to the staff how are you addressing those what we're going to do is talk to mr bradwell and put together some pd okay so it'll be probably more roundtable discussion mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a quick example i had let's see One was feeling connected to other adults. That was a low percentage that. Now, combination of a couple of things, right? COVID situation, people feel distant, uh, new staff members, faculty, but that's an area where we want to concentrate on, right? And try to get some roundtable discussion. Uh, and, and the second one was sensitivity issues of if uh, uh, something arises in class, do you have strategies to engage the situation when it comes to diverse situations? That was the second one that was uh, the lowest in terms of percentage back. So I would focus on those two areas mm -hmm. and say, how can we come up with some ideas together to kind of, uh, uh, you know, do better with that. And um, there were some really great areas in terms of comfortable talking with students or different cultures, um, comfortable incorporating new material, um, our commitment to the district in terms of our, uh, our 3420 uh, uh, policy. Um, that was some very good results too, and uh, integrating new material. So it was really those two areas that were of concern, not so concern, but the lowest amount that we resulted. And then what we're looking at now is we're going to start to break down the, the comments that people gave, um, and then look at the definitions that people put in for diversity, inclusion, and uh, and equity to see where there's distances, differences, and parallels and to see how far we are off what we think we should be focusing on. So, some good data. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yes. Very good, um, so we'll move on to approvals. Um, we have the, the first minutes A um, separated out because I wasn't there, so I, you know, and, um, so we'll do that separately, but, um, so why don't we just do that and then we'll go on to the consent agenda. So any questions or comments on those minutes? Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve them? Motion. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Stay. Okay, then we'll go on to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion for a consent agenda? Motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Can I ask a question about anyone, yeah. even with the consent? Okay, that's what I want to do. Yeah, well, we're going to go through them all, yep, but it's just we'll have a vote yep. on all of them, unless you want to pull something out. No, that's all right. All right, so we'll start with the minutes from October 14th. Anything there? If I say the wrong numbers or something, it's because I don't want to read you guys. So <laughs> okay, nothing. Okay, then the treasurer's report. Okay, uh, Bill. I just have a couple on that. Uh, 60652, Beelman, Inc. I don't think I've ever seen them before. It's a company out of um, Glens Falls that does a lot of the signs for us. Yeah, what? It's a company out of Glens Falls that does a lot of the signs around the school. And uh, on this, I, looking at all of the uh, Medicare payments, I'm assuming those are three month payments, is that correct? Yes, they're done quarterly. Okay. And then uh, 60815 CDW government. What is that about? 
And that is some kind of technology, but I don't recall exactly what it is. Um, I think it was teacher laptops. CW is our top supplier for laptops. Yeah, I think those were a, a, an order we put in for okay, teacher laptops this year. Yeah. Our smart boards, our laptops, our Chromebooks are okay. all through CDW. Okay. And then the last one is uh, 60861 Wex Bank. That's Why the, are you giving money to a bank? That's the <laughs> new company that um, we're using for the bus um, gas, gasoline purchases. Okay. Or we get it for the state. As we were using the fuel managers and giving us the lesson through the audit, they told us to go to the WEX program. Oh, okay. So that's the yeah, you'll start through. seeing that payment. Okay, thank you. That's okay. guaranteed the rate that the state would give out for the cost of gas. Okay. Um, any other questions on bills? Okay, moving along, budget transfer. Okay, it's the Heron County School Tax recapitulation. School tax refund. Um, closed deposit account and open deposit account. Explain, please. Hmm? The closed deposit account and open deposit account. Yes. Um, for the last capital project, we had um, we opened a new account at Community Bank, and there's like $7,000 left in there, and I would like to close that account and open a regular account up in um, MBT. In, at MBT. Okay. So everything's in the same bank, and um, Community Bank was charging us some fees. Um, it'll just be easier to have everything at MBT. Okay. Let me start the new capital so just project. just consolidate into one bank. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll have the capital outlay, we'll have the capital project, right? All the capital there. project capital, will come out of, the, out of the new accounts. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that? <laughs> Moving right along, uh, the budget calendar. Okay, surplus items. Anybody want anything? I have a question okay, on that. On the large cherry office desk with Hutch, I, what, which one is that? Is that the large cherry office desk with Hutch? Well, that's part of the surplus items? Yeah, it was downstairs for. Okay years yeah and what he's going to do is going to take some of the surplus and auction mm -hmm. off some of the stuff you know we we did last year if you remember yeah. we said anybody who wanted to do yep. stuff market it was one of those okay okay mm -hmm. all right then moving along transportation requests i'm assuming this is people that moved because they didn't apply by april of last year no it's uh it's actually a new uh employee of the school on the employee. Mm -hmm. So okay. whereas she was previously working there and transporting her own child, now her schedule working here doesn't allow her to do that. Okay. Um, contract with the House of Good Shepherd. Um, is that something new, or can you talk about it a little bit? It's a special ed placement. So we've used them before in the okay. past, but it is a student has recently been placed in this location. Okay. Any other question on that? Okay, um, Palatine Nursing Home Transfer Agreement. And, yeah. I just have a quick question on that. You probably answered this many times before, but I'm new, so I didn't really know. Um, what would constitute a non-disaster emergency transfer? I mean, I could see if there's a fire or, or you know, you're taking everybody on the buses, but what would be a non -emergency? As far as the Palatine Nursing Home? Yeah. Um, if they were to lose power, yeah, they've had it before where like okay. power situation, septic or something like that, and they have to remove the residents because they can't safely keep them there. Gotcha. I would think that would be, be an emergency. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess it is. It's just not a disaster. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's an inconvenience. Okay. And uh, learning 2025 agreement. Um, I have several questions about that. Uh, first of all, it looks very exciting. Um, and uh, there are two. There were two costs listed: fourteen or fifteen point four. You know which one we're going to do? Fourteen. We'll be fourteen. Okay. Those are S, uh, ASA members. Oh, three are ASA members. Okay. Um, ASA, uh, you know, oh, it's the association, American Association of School, School Superintendents. Okay. Um, they uh, they talked about sixteen hours of virtual discussion 
with, uh, with the person who will be designated to do that. And we talked about it going to a whole bunch of, to the, to the staff, to teachers, to administrators, to students, to you know, parents, to community members. And I was just wondering how we're going to figure out who would most benefit in what ways from this um, 16 hours of virtual discussion. We're actually right in the beginning stages of it, so we don't know how that would look yet. Okay. We'll, we'll let people know once we do. We just had a meeting today with them, uh, a virtual meeting today. And if you remember Ray McNulty, who the three people were at the meeting, Ray is going to be our liaison plus our trainer, so it's a piggyback like we talked about before. And what he'll do is he'll help design not only the leadership training, but help design how we'll reach out and, and do the uh, the uh, progression with the uh, with the faculty, staff, students. In addition to that, they'll start to pair us up in cohorts uh, in terms of districts around the country. There's right now about 140 school districts. And what they'll do is they'll pick these, the school districts that are involved that are very similar to what we're looking for and pair us up with four to six of those. And we'll have that collaboration and communication with them as well. So that's above the 16. In addition to that, they have um, uh, first the um, first Monday, excuse me, first Thursday. They have a professional development series where they talk about uh, one of their pillars of their organization, uh, and then the second uh, Thursday of each month, there's a roundtable with superintendents from all across the country, which allows me to sit in meetings, have collaboration meetings with, uh, uh, and just talk about general topics uh, overall. So, um, it's kind of a broad brush at this point uh, in terms of where. Uh, where we're going to go. We picked two areas of focus. Uh, one was uh, future learning and the whole child. Those are two of our, uh, of our key areas. As you know, you can't take on too much more than one or two. And then what we'll do is we'll start to develop our leadership training around those, but also how, how can we mold the leadership training to help motivate the faculty, staff, students, and parents, and how we can become better leaders to do that. You know, maybe it's through collaboration, roundtable, you, you know, so we'll, we'll make that um, uh, correlation between the training as well. That's the big picture. Okay, uh, another question. Um, unless anyone, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to keep going. Okay, go ahead. Um, one of the other things we talked about is helping with the district, um, what district level dashboard development. And that's, I know that's something that we've talked about. And, I would like to be sure that we're informed and kept up to, you know, abreast of how that's proceeding and, mm -hmm. and whether, you know, how it's going to be put together and, and worked with. Yeah. Um, so that would just be a request. And I'd also request to talk about having monthly videos. Um, and I would ask also that that be shared with the board. Um, you know, that would be just videos that talk about different subjects and that. That's the stuff I'm talking about every month, or every first week of every month. Yeah. Actual presentations. Yeah, if we can just be maybe, you know, give it a link to that or, or be able to... Let's talk about it. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. And let me, let, let's just break okay. it down and we'll, we'll have conversations. Okay. So. Um, and also they talked about blog. They want they wanted to share blogs and newsletters from a number of the component districts of this 200 you talked about. Yeah. And again, that's something I don't know how much we would, you know, have the time or interest in looking at them, but I'd like to have the link to be able to see what other districts are doing and sure. um, so if we can have that information as well and to whatever extent we have time to you know go through that it'd be great i'll include this in my, my, my bi-weekly updates as we get going and I'll also include it in uh we have board meeting updates okay. and then you know maybe we start to get to the to the trust of it and where we're heading maybe you know february march or whatever we can put a whole you know, you know as we're doing our second board meetings uh, just a presentation about where we are and what we're doing. So. And then the final thing is that they are going to have a summer summit. Um, and then what they talked about is that they wanted to include board members in, in those meetings. And I would request that we be informed as early as possible, as soon as you know, yep. about when it will be so if people are interested, they can make appropriate summer plans to be able to attend. Sounds good. So that would go. Uh, so that's all I have on that. But I, I, I just, it seems like a very exciting and uh, program that I'm really Yeah, I think the, the three board members who are there were, were, I think you guys can probably talk about the very impressed in terms of mm -hmm. where it's heading and, and where, 
think we're in a, in a good place in terms of both the combination of the learning with each other and 25 plus the leadership training. So it fits our, our system, our, our district, and our goals perfectly. Okay, so uh, move on to uh, early commitment to the bus lease, that's what you're talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. um, anything there? Mm -hmm. All right, then I ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So we'll move on to personnel. Um, can we do a consent on that as well? Absolutely. Is there any objection to that? Mm -mm. Okay, I'd like a motion for a consent agenda. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, um, point clerk of the special vote. Well, this is for the, the uh, capital project vote, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the first four, we have to do with the capital project vote. Any questions on mm -hmm. those? Okay, uh, retirements. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have uh, Lorraine. Lorraine. So I have to get there. I have a fix. So I have to move around to get to it. Okay, Lorraine. Yeah, Lorraine Van Slyke. And uh, who's the other one again? That's the only one. That's the only one. Okay. Um, any uh, resigning, you know, resigning, retiring? Retirement resignation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, any questions on either of those? Uh -uh. Okay, uh, point basketball coaches, anything there? Um, I just had one, uh, I think on that, let me just see a second here. Yeah, the modified boys basketball coach, I'm not familiar with Josh Will. He's a former student. He's a former student who works for our district now as a monitor and also coach modified football for him. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, winter coach, anything there? Volunteer assistant. Okay, and then uh, an extended leave. Mr. Renzi's having a baby, so congratulations. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks to be with his baby. And... Nice. Um, appoint mentors, a teacher mentor, anything there? Student mentors. Glad to see more and more. Wonderful. Uh, point of monitor. That's the backlog of the ones that moved up. So as they became monitor stage, the, or the monitor position was open. Any, any question on that? A sub monitor. Sub secretary. Yes. That's a new thing. Very nice to have. <laughs> Very lucky. Anything on that? No. And then lifeguard. Okay. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda for appointments. Motion. Second. Anyone? Please. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, all business. Senior lunch. What is what is the senior lunch? Um, so I have the, the legal agreement. I can give up enough copies for everyone so you all can look at it. I don't know if you want to wait till Evan's here to talk about it, but at least you can look at the policy now. But I can answer any questions you have, so up to all of you. Okay, so this is about the 15th. Yeah, yeah, and this was, you asked me to have the... Live. So this is just the generic one. It's not on letterhead yet, but you know, you know the wording will be the same. Thank you. So, you want to copy? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I would like to talk about this, even if Evan isn't here. Is that what okay? That? I would like to talk about this, even if Evan isn't here. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> but. So after a full month, I'm still not in favor of this. Okay. Um. I have concerns, too, actually. So, as you know, I have grown up with an open campus. And, you know, even good kids do wrong, make wrong decisions. And I'm not concerned about this, really. I'm con more concerned about something happening to the kids. They're driving away. 
it might be rushing, maybe a lot of kids piling in a car because not everybody has a car. They can't do Anything. that legally. I know, I know they can't, but they could. That's my concern. I've seen kids pile in the back of trucks, go out the other way. I've seen kids sit in a parking lot and do things that they shouldn't be doing. So that's number one. Number two kind of goes with the equity portion. So not everybody does have a car. And it's going to be that same have and have not situation that kind of builds on resentment with the kids. Because not everybody truly has an equal playing ground to get to the point where maybe they have the opportunity to go off campus. So, you know, we have kids who work really, really hard, but they're never going to get up to whatever level, whatever that, whatever you have for them to, to meet. That's my concern. So there's going to be some kids who are just going to be left out. And it's going to build resentment. I mean, there was that happened with the senior lounge. Some kids got to go, some kids didn't. And that really was a sticking point. I'm sorry, it happened with the senior lounge. When you had the senior lounge, there were kids that couldn't go in. And it was not a very good situation. And so I have a feeling this would be the same way. Some kids will be able to go and some kids won't. And it's just going to build that divide in our school when we're talking about equity where we should keep everybody together. That's my opinion only. Does anyone else want to say anything or should I respond? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Else? Yeah. I'd like to hear your response. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to the first point, you know, kids, yeah, I mean, there's always a risk, you know, and the kids are going to, the thing is that they're not kids, they're young adults, and in a few months they're going to be gone with us, so let us, you know, let them, let us start kind of setting them free a little bit and giving them that freedom. You know, I just think, I mean, when I was young, we had open campus, we went out and I don't know, we didn't really do anything stupid. I was a pretty crazy kid, but I understand that it's certainly a possibility, but I don't like to live in the, well, we're afraid that this could happen. So we're going to restrict our kids, you know, ability. I like to say, well, you know what? We trust them to do the right thing. We're going to give them that privilege and, you know, and there, I think they're going to own up to it because I think they'll appreciate it, especially with how locked up they've been the past couple of years and been unable to do anything, you know, and yeah, there'll be some kids who abuse the privilege and then the privilege will get taken away. And I'm going to make that very clear. You know, kids are not coming back or, you know, a kid just behaving badly. I get, you know, whatever. It could be 101 different things. Let me give you one example, just one example of top 10 kids yeah. who went out with a baseball bat and hit a mailbox and ended up with federal charges against them. That's just stupid. That's that stupid. didn't happen because they had an open lunch. That happened because they were stupid kids. Yeah, but they, they were going to do that but one they, way or another. But they could they, they could have done that after school. You, you think he? Yeah, I, they but they did. They did it during school. school, and the school got in trouble for that. So. Well, the school's not going to get in trouble because we we release. So I'm not worried about a liability. Okay. So if a kid's going to do something like that, and sure, it's possible, and it could be a top ten kid, it could be a it could be anyone, mm -hmm. you know. But people do crazy things, and us saying, well. If I, if I say I'm really going to hit this mailbox, I'm going to do it at 3.30. I'll do it at 4.30. I'll do it at 2 a.m. You know, so us restricting the whole class over what might happen, I just don't feel it's the right thing. I feel our kids deserve the opportunity to go out and, and prove that they are responsible and to, you know, they're going to be in college soon. And they're going to have all the freedom in the world to do anything they want to do and any crazy desire that they want to fulfill they can fulfill. And, and so I think letting them go out to McDonald's or Subway or something is, is relatively small potatoes. Uh, and yeah, look, I acknowledge anything could happen. I'm not saying, hey, I know nothing will happen. That would be a foolish thing to say. But uh, these are young adults, and I think they deserve the opportunity to, you know, be shown that we do trust them. And, that, and like anything in life, you know, you have trust until you break the trust. And when you break the trust, we deal with it. And there's consequences from that. You know, if they do something like smash a bell box, yeah, there's legal consequences. A lot of these kids are 17, 18 years old, and they'll face repercussions for that. Um, but, again, say that's one kid does it. What about the other 65 kids in class? Should they not get the privilege because one person's a knucklehead? So, I guess, in, in, to the second point, um, I, I guess I was... Uh, I, my birthday is in September, so when I graduated, I was 17. So when I was in high school, I was 17, which means I didn't have a car when I was 17. And all the seniors were about to go out to lunch. So I couldn't drive myself to lunch because I was too young to have a license, you know? And so I either hitched a ride with my friends or I ate in the cafeteria with the juniors. Um, and so 
you know, I think that a lot of kids who don't drive will have friends who drive. Um, I don't necessarily, and I think a lot of the reasons the kids don't drive is some of them are too young. And yeah, look, there'll be some kids. I know we live in a, a community with 65% poverty. Uh, and so there's kids who can't afford a car, won't have a car. And, and that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, but I also think most of these kids do have friends and will have a friend who drives and can hitch a ride with them. Because like you said, they are going to be you know, packing in. I don't think they'll be overpacking, but probably he'll have one kid take four of his friends out to McDonald's or something like that. Um, so I, I just don't see, I don't know if there'll be resentment, uh, you know, and maybe we, if there's a kid who really expresses, hey, I have no way to go out to lunch, we could probably no, work. I, I don't think kid. you understand. I wasn't just talking about the car. I was talking about yes. your ability to, to be the kid who has this average. Because that's what you're going to base it on, right? Just passing. Oh, just passing? You don't need to have a 95 average to go out. Yeah. But I want to use it as an incentive because graduation rate's the number one thing. Okay. Right? If a kid if a kid has, you know, a, a, a consistent 65 average, they're still allowed to go out. Um, but if, if they... can never afford to go out. What if they can't right. afford to go to McDonald's? They just can't Well, then we, then we provide free lunch, you know? Or they can but grab they a... they never have that ability to go. It's, Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand that, and that's, you know, but, you know, they, they could get lunch and bring it out with their friends, you but we're know? talking about equity. That's what we're trying to teach everybody, that, you know, the equity, trying to bring it down to the same level, I guess. I don't know. I think, I just think we're way too far in the weeds on it. Like, you know, first of all, I'll say that my opinion is these are kids who are signing up for the draft. They can enroll in, in, uh, in the service. And we're also encouraging them every day to take on a lifetime of debt to go to college. They can manage their lunchtime. All we're doing is they can manage their lunchtime. So I don't want to get involved in who can afford what and who has cars. It's none of our business. I think we're just opening up lunch and giving them options. At this point, do we even let them go outside at lunch? Yeah, there's the... Um little thingy there right you know. the little thing outside but they don't even have the the liberty to like walk on our campus no much yeah so, they, they could go to the to me that's absurd the 17 and 18 year old kids that's absurd let them would, sit outside and i would say yeah let them sit outside <laughs> like let's how about doing something well they can though them. but i mean they can sit outside for another two weeks i just don't think they need to be and prisoners they can I, sit outside but who wants to I right what's zero degrees at? we're managing 20 minutes of an adult's time and they have much, much bigger decisions they're making, I think. Is it just 20 minutes? Because how are they going to even be able to go somewhere? No, it's, it's, it's 40. But again, not our, I, I don't even care. Like, if they spend their 40 minutes however they want to. Mm -hmm. and our, our they'll figure it out. Our statement talks about being world ready. Yeah. Okay. These kids All right. are, I would just give so them my opinion. I, and Whatever I, your you opinion know, might I, be. I spent a month thinking about it because when you first mm -hmm. said it, I went flashback to my open lunch period. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is not a good idea. I know. Although those definitely do stupid things, but they're also mm -hmm. doing stupid things in the bathrooms right here in the high school. Okay, so mm -hmm. they are 18. They are stupid, like in many ways. And this is what prepares them to be less stupid when they have less supervision. Not, and not to mention what it would do for our community. To, to have those kids out and about is great for a community. Um, and as long as they're not being a menace, which businesses will decide whether or not they want to let them in, um, I think they're adults and we should minimize our contact. We also have a lot of kids who are driving to college courses. So my son goes to SUNY Cobus mm -hmm. all day. No one knows where he is at lunchtime. And, um, and his biggest adjustment to going to college courses, by the way, was not being micromanaged. He, he didn't realize that that was normal. So um, I just think this is one step okay. towards that, that goal. I just want to say from, and, and I think you brought up some really good points, Heidi, but I want to say from a teacher's point of view, what um, I think, which is I think where Patty was coming from, because the teachers are the ones who end up picking up the pieces for the kids who, um, where it's not equitable. And so although we're not, we shouldn't be micromanaging their time um, for that 40 minutes, it ends up being another three hours a week or more, I'm just guesstimating, of dealing with all of the little things that could possibly come up as a result of that. And that's not saying that we shouldn't allow them to go. I'm just saying that that ends up being something 
that becomes another part of our job and sucks another part of the teacher's time away because they're picking up the pieces from that or dealing with the drama of this or giving a kid five bucks so he can go out to lunch here and there. And those are the things that administration doesn't see. Those are the things that the board doesn't see. Those are the things that the teachers and the students see. And um, so I think that if the teachers and the students are supportive of it, then great. But I think it should be something that is looked at or evaluated um, after five weeks to say, hey, you know, uh, talk to the teachers, talk to the students. What is the general um, consensus of how people are feeling about this? Because it, as much as everybody thinks that a teacher's job is from eight to three and they get to leave, we all know that it's not. And we all know that they're spending their lunches trying to deal with whoever's got trauma and whatnot, even though it's not their job and it's the social worker's job or whoever. It ends up being the teachers who are doing it because the social workers don't have enough time in their day to do it as well. So um, anyway, those are. I think that's what Patty was trying to get at in terms of the equity is because there's a whole bunch of other things that go into it that the other people don't see. So that's, that's where I would struggle with it. Um, but I think it's great. It's a great idea for us to look at if it's going to be evaluated by the, by the students and by the teachers after a certain amount of time. Yeah, well, I definitely think it's a thing that we haven't done, so we have to keep up on it. So it's not like, hey, here it is, and then we never look at it again. So I totally agree, you know, every, every five weeks, first of all, every five weeks we have to look at it because part of it is checking who's failing and who's passing, right? And so we have to know just on that. And then that could also be other you know, reaching out to teachers and especially senior teachers to see how it's going. So I think it's something that is going to need to be monitored and, and maybe it's going to need to be tweaked. But I, I think that, you know, the, the pros outweigh the cons. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I, I think you raised some valid points, Patty, and I certainly, those are all concerns me. Um, but then there's, you know, it, it, there's a, it's like a really, you know, two-sided mm -hmm. issue, uh, for Definitely. sure. Definitely. Um, and I, I guess the way I feel is that it's, it, it would be something worth trying, but the one thing I would add to what you just said, uh, Nick, would be that you should not only ask teachers how it's going, but ask students how it's going. Yeah. No, no, I know you said that, but you didn't mention the students, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to be sure that that would be included. So, um, I, I, like I said, I, I, I share your concerns, but on the other hand, I think that it, as long as we kind of evaluate it and, and uh, you know, and really try to not only talk to teachers but students, I, I think I would, I would be in favor of giving it a try. Would be my, my feeling. Um, and two more suggestions. Yeah. One is to reach out to two or three school districts that currently do it and ask the pros and cons in terms of what they're seeing and what they don't see. And what troubles they've had, or what successes they've had, and the second thing is, you know, I know you'll do this, but just to, here's the rules, and there's no vending. Yeah, you're late two minutes. It's your responsibility, like you said, they're you know they're yeah. free, they're freedom. They they know from you know eleven to eleven forty is their time, not eleven forty three, not eleven forty four, and we've got to figure out that they may have to get back at eleven thirty to make sure they're back here by eleven thirty eight, right? Um, and obviously the stuff in terms of being in trouble. So I would have stringent guidelines to give them all the ownership in the world, but at the same time, mm -hmm. this is where the ball drops. Completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I just ask one more question? Because I totally agree with what you both just said. Yeah. You know, the review of it, again, after five weeks, making sure that you have some really set rules to start off with. Um, the kids have 40 minutes for lunch? All kids have 40 minutes for lunch? So they have... 20 minute, you know, like 22 minute lunches followed by 22 minute study halls. And so for seniors, as a senior privilege only, they would be, you know, kind of excused from their study hall to mm -hmm. sign out so they could have 44 minute lunch to be out. Uh, realistically, you can't be out and back in 20 minutes, I think. Right. Okay. So, yep. But that weighs back on the course failure. So if they don't take advantage of the, of the 20 minute study hall, that could be reflective of the course, and that's going to be up to them. 
Correct. That would be every five weeks? Yes, every five weeks we get either the progress report or report card to get the failure list, and you know I always okay. go through it anyway, so that would just be one more component for it. I think the kids understand that the progress report is a little different sometimes, so they're going to have to really pay attention to the grades five weeks as opposed to ten weeks. Yeah. And I think we should make it really clear to the parents that it's lunch period and the study hall, because I think right. the sales pitch will be it's I'm just going out on my lunch, and it could be five weeks before the parents realize that they've missed a study hall every day for five weeks. Right. I agree. Okay, so um, are we ready to vote on this? Yes? Okay, could I obtain a motion to approve the senior um, lunch? With the stipulations that we suggested? With the stipulations of about the five week review. And also checking, as Nick suggested, with other school districts to, so we don't have to let the wheel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, do I have a motion? Motion. I have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Good planning. Thank you. I can't wait to hear the first stupid thing someone does. We're <laughs> <laughs> hoping that we don't. I do too. <laughs> we definitely will. <laughs> I'll make sure I email you as soon as it happens. <laughs> All right, so the next one on the agenda is um, uh, presentation topics on for we have five meetings January, February, March, April, May. We'll have two meetings, and the second meeting will, will be the you know, basis for a non-business meeting that will have presentation topics. So I would open the floor for suggestions for the second meeting topics. Um, if people haven't put that together. I, we can, I, we, anyone who has any can put them out there, and we can have an additional uh, thing on, in December's meeting where we'll have to finalize it, because starting in January is when we'll be doing it. So, um, if you, anyone have any suggestions for presentation topics? I did last month, and I don't remember <laughs> what I said, because <laughs> I gave a couple of ideas, but... I thought we were discussing it then, <laughs> and now I don't know. All right, so let, let, I mean, I have a couple written down. Um, if you want, I'll throw them out. If not, we can just wait till December. But let's really get them nailed down in December. I would just Does suggest that we get January's going, because I mean, yeah. by December 9th, That's not fair break, to the people you know, okay. who are doing it, yeah. But it's the second meeting. So right. yeah, okay, we, we can go to December 9th. Second meeting, yeah, we're good. Yeah. I would just suggest two myself. One is to update the goals, and two is I'd love to bring the CSI team, the students in, to present on what they're doing uh, mm -hmm. with the elementary school, which I, I, I witnessed the other day. It was fantastic. They led a class on some of the stuff they're doing, plus stuff they're doing in here. So I, I would, mm -hmm. uh, and we always like to hear from our students, but I think that's a group that's really doing some innovative uh, new things. And I think our presentation should be student-centered. As much as we can, I agree. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was the other one? Uh, you know, obviously we want to do an update on our goals, so I would probably want to do that probably around February or March. And then uh, the CSI students, we can, we can tell them now in January if you wanted to. So. Okay, so... Um, I think it would be good to start us off with our students. <laughs> I think it would be good to start us off with our students, because I think that's what this should be. It should be student-centered. And it gives them the opportunity to be able to do the type of presentation um, to us and have that uh, ability to have a different type of audience. So you talk about that CSI presentation? That's one mm -hmm. example, yes. Okay. All right, well, if you want, I'll throw up two, two things that I would be suggesting. And we can, again, we'll, we can agree on all this in December way. Everyone can bring other ideas as well. Um, one thing which... Um, I thought it would be how to help students to identify their passions, and once we can help them identify them, give them a pathway to pursue them in our school. Um, and another is um, how to improve um, student participation in shaping their education. And those are just two ideas that I, again, you know, throw it out. But let's uh, let's have 
you know, let's we'll have to finalize it at the December meeting. So please bring in any ideas that you have, and and let's talk about them and come up with the five that we want to uh, actually go. I think it would also be great if we heard from the principals if they have some things, some special things going on in their schools that we don't know about that the kids could present about because we might not know about something special happening with the elementary that they're doing some kind of um, kid mentor program with fifth graders versus in kindergartners or whatever, something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm just making that up. But you know, you know what I'm saying is is that and as well with the with special ed as well. So if you, if you guys can also bring any ideas and then throw them into the hopper for discussion, well, that'd be great. Okay. okay. What was the goal of those second meetings again? The second one. But yeah. What's the purpose of them? Non-business related items and presentations. Okay. So we, yeah, we don't have we the, can we see don't what's have happening the whole agenda. Basically, schools. some if a few things come up, we'll discuss. You know, have them on the agenda. But basically, it's just a, an informational and educational session mm -hmm. about topics that we find interesting and meaningful um, for for our school. It'll be some budget items too. You know, like just talking about. Stuff. Yeah, but basically, it doesn't have the same business agenda that we have on the first meeting. So that we have the time to do that and not be all like we're going to be here for the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Are we agreed on that then. December yeah. will mm -hmm. have the final uh, consideration. Okay, then moving along to new business. Um, I wanted to add just one short thing to new business, which is a report back on the Hall of Fame, which uh, we haven't really ever report back on. So, um, public hearing day for capital vote project, project vote. Yeah, just November 23rd, we'll have a, a hearing if anybody has any questions, concerns on the PowerPoint, we'll have a presentation boards. Um, and if anybody would like to attend, they, they can. Okay, and then uh, the author Pedley's scholarship. Yes, I met with um, um, the daughters of Arthur Pedley and they proposed a $5,000 scholarship for a graduating senior, preferably in, uh, with math criteria um, uh, in terms of advanced math, maybe possibly going into math or technology or business. Uh, so the criteria is kind of open a little bit, but focused on a lot of math uh, related topics. but. What a, just a fantastic opportunity for our students. Um, and they're looking to kind of possibly break it up over the four years of student going to school so they can get a little money each year for, for college. So, outstanding to hear, another great addition to our scholarship funds. Okay, um, and then um, on the Hall of Fame. Great event, excellent. I, I really thought it went off without a hitch. There was uh, about 85 people. Um, food service people did a great job. Uh, Jody Biscani did a really great job being the MC, a former uh, student and, and current teacher here. Uh, it was nice for me. I don't want to personalize it for me, but I got, I got to meet a lot of people who I heard about uh, and uh, people we heard about in terms of uh, inductees and the history of the school district and, and their siblings. and. Uh, it was, it was a really nice night, and um, you know, the plan was, I can't say it's all about timing, but you, you know, your idea was to go from 5 to 8 o'clock, and it ended about 8 to 11, so we almost mm -hmm. nailed that too. So it was uh, overall just a really great, special night, and Patty was there, and Pete were there, mm -hmm. and they could probably, hopefully, echo the same. It was, it was really it was great. great. Very well put together. Just flowed. Just yeah. went exactly right. Exactly what you would want. Oh yeah, I was in a plane at the time. So <laughs> Our plan is to do it every other year. Are we because... going to <laughs> You want to play it every year. Um, because what happens is over time, you want this to be a long-lasting endeavor. If you do eight or ten inductees every year, you'll, you'll eventually run out of inductees. You don't want to do that. So we'll make it a special event every other year. <laughs> and thank you to our Cal Foundation and uh, Hills Marks for donating uh, funds to, to give that promotion. Okay, and then the last thing is uh, we agreed to add to new business a discussion about the tech question um, and class rank, so floor is open. My question is, um, so it sounds like no kids from P-TECH have been included in class rank. 
From any okay. district, any chip and post is correct. Okay. Um, and actually, it will be on the sheet starting next year for every kid that enters from PTAC saying that they'll not be included in class rank. Okay. So, my um, the, the reasons are because they're in a whole other uh, school. They're not taking any of the courses that are similar to the courses that are here from ninth grade all the way up. We try to include them as much as possible, obviously, with sports and things of that nature because they are still officially a, a, a student, but they're not taking any of the similar courses that the students would take here. I thought the kids would go to college for the year. That was going to be my next That's the question. senior kids, right? They've been here for three years, mm -hmm. and they've taken courses in the senior year. So. So, so some of the factors of this is that they were out of the district for the whole four years. Correct. Not. Just None of the courses senior are junior, senior year taking some of the tough to rank, and there's I, there's a reason. For, there's a reason why every school district doesn't do it. From Bondo to Fort Wayne to OSJ to the what if a kid goes in their junior or senior year, but they were in school for freshman, sophomore, or junior year? If they go to the PTEC P -Tech program in general, they have to go. They have to start their freshman. Year. They do. Yeah. Okay. Um, any anyone else? Why well, just one thing? I know that uh, you know when, when both of my boys went to um, FM for their senior year, um, you know, early mid they um, they were dropped out of class rank, you know, and, and then you know, a couple of years later that changed. And um, I was just wondering, you know, is there any, is there any thought about ideas about how it might change for P Tech students? Because you know if they go to P Tech and they're not in class rank. You know, I'm not saying it's a life changer, but you know the scholarships we offer are quite mm -hmm. impressive and incredible and helpful. Um, and I was just wondering, has there been any discussion of ways where that might be changed? And they're saying they're starting next year, the P Tech program will say you are not to be included in class rank. Okay, okay, but that hasn't been the case. It's not in there. Everybody's right, now. right but, but it's an understanding that the kids are. That this is on. This is. Was that Come across every district? But my question is, just to to go with yeah. our current students right now, was that an understanding to them and their families when they went into P Tech in ninth grade? That I don't know because I wasn't here. That's will, that's my question. I will tell you that P Tech was presented to us like an elitist program. Yeah. That we, I was told that kids were going to Boston University after P Tech. I ran the curriculum through some friends in education and found out that was not true. Right. Um, but it was not presented that way in ninth grade. So that could be a source of some of this confusion. Sure. Um, I think they grade a little differently um, than we do. I think they have standards-based grading for some of their materials. Do, yeah. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't really compute as you compare between the classes. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. I was going to um, say, can you give us an example of like a P-TECH schedule? Like what classes do they take? Well, it ranges, it depends what program we're in. Yeah. So it varies. And they, they're combined into like a class of project-based learning. Correct. So they'll do some bio and some, um, but they're expected to take regences at the end. Okay. Um, but it's taken maybe a little bit differently. Is, yeah, the setup is different, and they're often combining courses. So, like for example, global studies is not offered in ninth grade, tenth grade. They they take both global courses and they put it all into one year by doubling up their periods. So those structures are a little bit different. Plus, then they specialize based on what their um, based on what their I guess I'll call it major um, for lack of a better term. So then the classes vary. Um, based on so the, the ag tech and you might go into um, that science perhaps some of those classes so they vary in that regard that they aren't necessarily equally translating to what we are offering in a, in a typical um, like high school setting so that's where it, it kind of it changes it up a little bit and even how they structure it and I think again with the grading, grading. It's, a little bit different. it's like one through four and then you have we to had transfer to adjust how we number. use IEPs um, so it's with um, like IEPs and how there and how that was graded and how they received accommodations because of that. I haven't had a student specifically that we needed to modify that recently. Probably because they've gotten good at figuring out what they want ahead of time. But um, so that there's just some differences all the way around. Um, but I can't speak to exactly sitting in the seat because I, I don't know. I don't know. But when they come, 
Yeah. I'm sorry, but when they complete this program, they do have an associate's degree, so yes. there's a huge benefit to it. Correct. They pay their fully, and Chris is right, it's, it's separate, but it is the trajectory. They know I'm going to ninth grade, this is their trajectory for the next you know, four or five years. So you lose this, but you gain this. And if you consider it, I mean, after a, after a fifth year, they can have a two year associate's degree. Um, that's a huge financial benefit because then if you want to go to a four year college, you only got two more years to go. If you transfer into a four year college, does your class rank matter at all? No. No, not, not, not so the that associate's degree. If they accept you, you, you have right. two years worth of college done. Yeah. So it's it's essentially moot. Which is much more than the scholarship that we could offer would amount to. However, I will say that the kids who like somebody who's doing the senior year early admit, or the students who stay in, the, in school who are taking the AP courses or the college and the high school courses, either way, some of those kids are getting at least a full year in college credits by the time that they leave as well. So them. what? They're paying for them. It's not covered by the school. Correct. Correct, they're, they're, but they're also yep. getting the advantages yep. of um, the but if you're If you're offering college uh, classes in the classroom and a kid is going to a SUNY school, those are the same, right? An AP class is a SUNY class. Oh, I got you. No, pretty much. No, they not. No. They transfer not, in. Don't it's not the same, but they, they get credits. You can have credits that they get. Okay. They, they, it's not they, under the SUNY program? No. No. It's the college board. Yeah. And so they don't necessarily. We have SUNY courses, but we have also AP. AP. There's SUNY does take AP. Let's put it that way. That's the best SUNY does course. take AP if, does if you get a three or above. Yeah. 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 Right. So Most right. of them. But if the kid does it, if the kid gets, it depends yeah. upon the school that they go to. Some class, some schools won't take so they what? three on the AP. Or two on the AP. Or so they say the that no, they weren't. Different. We don't know before any of us were here. So, so, yeah. so, so theoretically, they were told that we don't. Those credits I will hear you weren't here, and she wasn't. So we don't know. No, no, you're right. No, no you're right. Correct. 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 Yeah. No, no, just clarifying. Yeah. So yeah, it really depends upon the program. Mm -hmm. I do think we have to be careful about making this a financial discussion. And right. I understand that, but I also think we have to do what's right of, of how it all works with curriculum and everything else. I don't, yeah, I mean, oh, I it's definitely, it's the definitely more, it's definitely more it, but I think we should yeah. be careful about making it about money. Right, right, right. No, I agree. I think it's, it's more of a trajectory and program. Right. So if you start your ninth grade year, you know the direction that you're going. It's going to be totally different than what you would have here in the environment. <laughs> but we try to include them as much as possible, like sports and things like that, you're taking it back because you know, we're still you know, residents of this district and want to include them as much as possible. But, but if it's, I guess we're going to, we're going to go to what we currently have now in the policy, that's what we have to honor. But we don't have the either way in the policy, pretty much. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at it that way, I think it's great if you want to put something in there so it specifies things but if the current question is what it states right now and or we can't go back four years and say how it was stated to families that went in, um, that's, that's a gray area. It um, is, but it's also, I mean, some things are just understood. I mean, every school district is, is following this, this, this plan. And it's understood when these kids go in that there's a different, a whole different trajectory in the school. So but, I, I get what you're saying. But but, yeah. but at the same time, it's still they're they're still allowed to participate mm -hmm. in in school functions and and in all of that, and they're still a Canajahari student. So from they, that perspective, yes, but not the academic. Do they walk our stage. I didn't remember that. Do, oh, they, do they walk our stage at graduation? They can, they, we, we offer that okay. here for them too. Okay. Because they were, you know, lifelong residents. Mm -hmm. But the, the coursework itself, you do this, it's every other kid that went through PTEC forever. No, I understand how, that. How, I just, I do, I understand that. But if we're honoring what we currently have written as a policy, and it's not. It doesn't clear say specifically cut. that. 
Yeah. It doesn't have PTEC in there. That's why I'm saying yeah. it's not clear that it's not there or that it is there. And I'm, I'm not arguing yeah. the, the logistics of, of, of whether or not this is. What I'm arguing is what it currently says and how, as a district, we have to honor what it currently says. Yeah. Um, so, so when they enter PTEC in ninth grade, they're expected to finish that fifth year, right? Correct. That's the expectation. So I think that's the point. That it, the, the point of going into PTEC makes class rank move. It does, because yeah. they're, they're not right. taking Right, if you complete five years, you have an associate's degree, the then yeah. uh, class rank is irrelevant. How could, you, how could you rank a kid who's taking totally So I think that's the part where it's a Four student. years of different coursework. That's mm -hmm. very tough to do. And you haven't really finished. I think you're right. Because they're yeah, supposed exactly. to go to five. You're not done yet. So you sign up for five years. You're not signed up for... hand them a diploma. They walk the stage, but we are instructed to hold that diploma until they've completed the program. Mm -hmm. So literally, the kid is handed. You know, they finish their four years. We hand them their an empty diploma thing because, you know, okay. and they we hold on to it until they officially complete their entire program or they choose to... And they get the high school diploma and the associate's degree at the same time. Yeah. And, and then when they, they transfer their high school standing and that's how we then okay. are helping to pay for that, and that okay thing. so what you're saying is that the that the kids who's in p-tech right now they are next year they'll be super seniors basically you know for for that uh, so they could actually graduate in 2023 instead of 2022 so they haven't technically graduated high school. They're just walking with their class. They're walking, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't hand it to them. Like, they officially mm -hmm. don't receive that. They've completed their high school credits, but in order for all of the magic in the financial world, I guess, to say that they are still a high school student, we hold, we maintain that actual diploma. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is there ever a case-by-case -case basis based on what Mr. Fatto was saying when he was here? It sounds to me like, in his case... And I don't know if this is yeah. the case or not, but that his son is taking extra classes. Does My that mean he's yes. going to graduate with a diploma in 2022? From my last meeting with them, that is what it sounds like, but I cannot tell you straight up that that's the, the actual path he's on right now. I don't know. So I don't know that. Well, if that is true, um, we don't count any credits that you would take in the summer or any extra in-class rank. So that couldn't be counted. Okay. And since had, that, that's, that's the yeah. technical We've stuff. had yeah, situations yeah. in the past, too, where we've had programs that, because they didn't get credits somewhere else, then had to take special credits during different like, winter sessions or summer sessions in order to fulfill their high school credits. Like, like a health class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they don't count toward and, classes, yeah, yeah, and so those fall outside of you know their typical year, but they've had to put them in just because of the nature of their course of study. So those are some factors. It's not every kid, though. But there are kids that do fall into that. I think the big the big switch to this, or the big dynamic, is they're in their ninth grade, knowing that in five years there's a whole. It's not there's there's no correlation to the coursework here, the grading system. I think the problem is that that maybe they didn't know that yeah. as he entered in ninth grade. That's yeah, the question. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. There's no way for us to know. There's no, there isn't a way for us to know. There isn't, but I just wonder why 10 school districts in the area don't have, you know what I'm saying? Like, but they might say they it, might we just did it. Yeah. yeah, we just I, maybe didn't. I mean, the, the the I talked to some other principals, and just it was kind of what we're saying here is it's just comparing apples to oranges. Right. We have a class rank because we have all the kids in the same program or the same opportunities, and who have a rise, you know, it's all, but it's all the same. This is something totally different. They move at a different pace. They grade differently. Everything's different. And so to compare, and I asked, you know, some principals, because I'm unfamiliar with all this, and they were just like, I wouldn't even know how to do it. Even if you could do it, I don't even know if there's a way to do it. So that's what I got from, from other, like, locals, principals. And, again, it's just literally just apples and oranges, and I think that's the big problem. It sounds to me like the, like the um you know, you're calling it their senior year just because that's the kids that they entered mm -hmm. kindergarten with, not because they're actually right. completing high school. Yeah. So it's kind of a courtesy to let them participate and go to prom with their and class, stuff like but that. they're not. They're not even in let that. Do another little piece of homework and talk to the, the principal at PTEC and see what explanation that they go through in ninth grade too. Let me just make sure I get all the details. 
and then also you know what they present and how they present. Because uh, I, I would I would I'd be shocked if it was presented different. You know what I mean? Differently to each student, and it probably isn't. But I I really want to see exactly what. I mean, right, and, and it's really hard to say because we had different administration at the time, different guidance counsel, school counselors mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. so it, it's really hard to say how things were presented to a family it, before yep. they it, they entered into it, mm -hmm. um, and that's the part that breaks my heart, is the fact that we don't know that, and we... Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm yeah. not sure why it, why it would be heartbreaking, though, because the because if you complete the program as intended... It is irrelevant what your class rank could have or would have been because you have an associate's degree. So it doesn't matter. Unless it's just you want to say you were 20th in your class, it has no bearing on their well, future. The financial aspect would be because they could get money for further college. And but that goes they don't for, they go for all four years if they're in college. college. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Understood. So, so, so that, it, it, I can say, it does have a significant impact. But every, every school has scholarships, too. Yes. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. But even so, I mean, even our most generous scholarship would not come close to comparing to the financial benefit you get from having an associate's degree. Mm -hmm. totally, so it's yeah. not a financial argument, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a question of, right. is there any way, log you know, logistically, to deal with the academic aspect of it? Because mm -hmm. uh, financially, it, you know, going to P-TECH is a winner by far. Mm -hmm. but, so, but that's so that's not the thing that I'm concerned with. Uh, well, I think I'm it's important to present that. Is there a meaningful that. way? Yeah, I think that's right. To present that. that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, presenting it that way is is really important. Let me do a little bit more homework. Let me get back to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let me see what is exactly presented because it is a common theme that I think kids understand as they enter this. It's a different. <laughs> so I'd be shocked if we're the only. But it, regardless, regardless, this is a family that didn't, and I think we have to we have to acknowledge the fact that that perception is reality, and so um, there's something that needs to be explained, figured out, whatever. There. I I, I don't disagree sometimes, but we we can't always be the the exact explanation for every situation that happens we do have to have some sense of what programs we're entering and how we we can't always be the bastions of we didn't explain everything to the last extent and in writing three times you know what i mean yeah so I'm, you I'm, have to captain your own ship i'm a little bit i don't disagree in some cases but it seems like we, we constantly that, and not just this case i'm just you know in general you, you're you're an educator you get it okay. it seems like we're always kind of there's got to be some ownership at, at times, but I'd like to see what that conversation is, mm -hmm. like specifically in terms of how they present it when they start, um, as they're going through even, and see what they say. But If I can offer to, to yeah. talk to their counselor over there, because they're the ones setting up those classes as they're moving forward, and yeah. that person has been there the longest. Oh, good point, yeah. So they might have a better understanding. Because yeah, even the principal has been there four years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Jen Spondle has been there. The What's the name again? Spawnable. Oh, Spawnable. Yeah. Okay. Let me do a little bit more. The, the, the other thing to remember is I think if it was something that the P Tech people program felt was doable, they'd be advocating for it. And I, you know, I, I love Chris and I, I have respect from where he's coming from. But I think if if the P Tech administrators thought there was an injustice in this, I think they'd be knocking out mm -hmm. every one of the district's doors, and they're yeah. they're not doing that from what I understand. So. I think that speaks a little bit to me as well. Yeah, and I don't even want to, like, it's a shame you didn't want to put a name to somebody. Like, right. It doesn't matter if right. Chris was here, it's right. just right. a parent was here. You know, sometimes we. That's, well, that's what I'm trying to say as parent. Yeah. I'm just trying to be right. consistent Agreed. with how we're interpreting things. Yep. Well. Let me do a little homework and I'll I'll send them an update for you. Later. And, um, you know, I did promise Chris that we would have a meeting with him. So after they uh, does his homework, I think we should have that meeting try to further, have further discussion based on what we all well, I thank about. you for the opportunity to yeah. be able to discuss before you had to talk. Yeah. And certainly, you know, we'll report back on that discussion as well. Well, okay. it helps for us to hear the different viewpoints because for me, I needed to hear what people had to say about it and bring up different points so that you don't feel like you don't know. Okay. So. 
Okay, anything else on this? But I think going back to this real quick on the process part mm -hmm. was that we gather all the data and all the information with Mark and myself in person, both sides, then present that back to the board. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the process that we want to continue to follow. Um, so both sides are taken, meaning making sure what this person or somebody said is correct, and it could be, or not, and we want to present all that you know, first, right? And we want to get all that data so when we present here again, say a month from now or whatever, we have all the both sides correct data. I think that's the that's the piece of the process, I think. So and, and he was fantastic. He went to Nick, did the right things, went to me, did the right things, uh, had a great conversation, was very respectful, um, and came and just said, you know, this is that's the process, and he, and he followed it you know, exactly what we would expect every parent to do that. So a good overall. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. All right, nothing to exact today. So I would entertain a motion to go home. Okay. Motion. Right. Put that on the agenda. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Oh, uh, board members don't leave. We have to take our yearbook photos. Um, oh boy. <laughs> I didn't see anything at all about your life. I didn't leave that in school.